Today I'm going to show you a really simple way of setting up a focus pool inside Maya. I'm going to use this shot from Casino Royale to recreate. Uh, so quite an extreme focus pull, pulling from Bond to the broken wine glass. Um, so let's get into Maya. First thing I've done is just recreated a simple camera move and we have um, some character animation that my ex-colleague Will Healy's done. I'll drop his website in the description and go check out his work. So with the camera selected, in the attribute editor, we're going to scroll down to the Arnold. Now you have depth of field settings here, um, but because I'm rendering an Arnold, I will be using the Arnold ones today. And we have a little checkbox to enable the depth of field. So if I just bring this out and hit play, um, we can see that nothing is out of focus yet. Um, just by enabling it, it doesn't actually give you any um, <laughs> any blurred part of the image because the aperture size is set to zero and that means depth of field is turned off. So if we put in a value, say one into here, what happens is we've now enabled the depth of field and nothing is in focus and that is because of our focus distance value. So we need to come in and alter that. Um, focus distance is the point at which you want it to be in focus, perfectly in focus. And so we need to set that. So at the beginning of the scene, the character is in focus. So if I select our character's bow tie, for example, is the point that we want in focus, I can quickly find out what the focus distance of that is by going to display heads up display object details and I get this readout here and it tells me that the distance from camera is 335.496 so I can go back so let's just remember 335.5 go back to the camera and in the focus distance type in 335.5 or whatever the value is of the object you've selected and if I hit that now we can see that the character is in focus, but the glass is out of focus. So that's great, that's what we want. Now when you select an object, um, this distance from camera value will be the center of the object. So if you've got quite a big object, uh, I'll show you another way of finding out the value because you might want to focus on the front part and I'll show you for the glass in a bit. So. Now that we've set the focus distance for the start of the shot, we're just going to decide at what point the focus starts to shift. And it's as my character looks and notices the wine glass that we're going to start to shift. So probably about 554, five, I reckon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and set a keyframe on the focus distance value. So from 554, five, we're now going to work out at what point we want the focus to have fully changed to our glass. So something around five, seven, eight, maybe. So now what we want to do is figure out the focus distance that we want for the glass. So if I select the glass, it gives me a value of one, two, eight. So going back to the camera, I'm now going to type in one, two, eight here right click and set another keyframe. So now I have two keyframes on my focus distance um, and we can see that as I drag the value updates and the focus shifts. One thing that I haven't talked about yet is the aperture size. I just set it at one um, and that works okay for my shot. However, it might not for yours. So let's just talk about the aperture size quickly. The aperture size is um, Arnold's value for what would be the f-stop in a real world camera. And essentially, the larger the aperture size that you put into the Arnold size value, the shallower the depth of field is, which means 
that from the focus distance point, <laughs> less of the image is going to be in focus. So a shallow depth of field will only focus kind of just around the focus distance and then it's going to fall off really quickly. And you can see these examples here. So at two, our character is more blurred than they are with an, a value of one. And with a value of 0 0.1, our character is hardly blurred at all because that gives you a wider depth of field, which means from the focus point, which is the middle of the glass around here, um, we have a really wide depth of field, which basically means that most of the image is in focus. Just to note that the... Um, this aperture value uses the world units in Maya. So it might be that whilst my in my scene um, scale works with a value of like 0 0.1, 1 and 2, you might find that you need to set these values much higher if you have a much bigger scene to get the kind of look that you want. So at 1, this is kind of the, um, the fall off. And it's okay, but if I looked back the the bond footage I would see that it's it's actually the character is much more out of focus than that so I'm going to just up the aperture size to 1.5 just to mean that my character is going to be more out of focus now what starts to happen as I up the aperture size is that parts of the glass start to become out of focus here and so I said earlier that I would talk about how we can adjust the focus distance if we need to again. And because it's focusing on the center of the glass, I actually want this part of the glass to be the main focus. So how can I quickly do that? Well, I'm just going to create a cube and then I would snap it to this point of the glass. And that gives me a distance from camera of 112. So what I can actually do now is come in here and where I've got my last keyframe, I can change it to 112 and just update that. And then I can either just hide the cube or remove the cube. And that will give me a much more easier to pinpoint which part of my object I want. And now we can see that this point is in focus and we're actually getting this part of the glass out of focus which matches the reference from Casino Royale. I've just gone ahead and rendered my scene to show you the final result that I achieved. I had to up the AA samples to get a render this clean. When you introduce depth of field you will introduce noise so just be aware of that. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful. Um, there are obviously other ways of achieving depth of field with inside Maya, including using the Z depth pass. And I will look at doing a tutorial on that soon. So hopefully you found this helpful and I'll see you again soon.